Generic greetings! Paradox Grand Strategy games are very deep, quite complex, and indeed sometimes complicated. It's something that I haven't really delved into too much, and this is really the only uh, 4x or about 27x, because it's obviously a Paradox Grand Strategy, which means there's like lots of x's in there and lots of facets to the game. Uh, it's the really only one that I've uh, messed around with that I've even sort of bothered with, because, well, I thought that Stellaris could be the game that gets me into Paradox Grand Strategy. It hasn't, and oh, I still do want to try things like Crusader Kings 2 and um, EU4 and Hearts of Iron and all that sort of thing, but um, I always think the same thing. I like Stellaris. It's in space. Why would I not pick the space game? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, either way, I when I did my preview video, which was probably back in March 2016, I said that this is a really good game, I really enjoy it, all that sort of thing, and I think I put about 10 or 12 hours in at the time, and then I think after that video I probably put another 10 or 12 hours in and then sort of left it for no other reason than I was just playing other things and just was, uh, you know, like I said, just playing other things and there was uh, no real reason why I fell out with it. I didn't fall out with it, like I said, I was just moved on to something else. And as of late, I've been playing a lot of it. In fact, I probably put another 30 hours in over the last two weeks because a couple of friends have got it and uh, we end up playing online and blah, blah, blah. And uh, either way, I've got well into to the game and really, really enjoying it. So I've got a beverage here with me. Mm. Today's beverage is a nice cup of coffee. Black, no sugar, but it is... Um, actually, no, it probably will have sugar in because it's like a, a free open sachet thing. It's actually a coffee and like amaretto flavor thing. It's quite nice. You get it uh, essentially when it's getting uh, when it's getting colder, which although it's not really that cold it's uh we're having those days now anyway i'm gonna go around my planet and upgrade a lot of my systems to actually have some power because as you can see i'm on minus power at the moment which is not good this is the Generican Collective, as you can see, and it's, I think I'm probably about half an hour, maybe an hour into this uh, single player game. Small Galaxy, I think it's only 150 stars with about 8 nations on it, in fact 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay 10, and there's another one there, which is the mini, was it, the Mythfell commonality, I'm guessing that is... I'm guessing they're like a splinter. Or maybe they've been absorbed by this green guy. Green guy is... complete. A fanatic pacifist and spiritualist. So the chances of him attacking there are slim to none. Anyway, my uh, my people, the Generican Collective. Let's have a quick look. Hang on. Why is it not working? No, I have to press that one there. Okay, so this is High Elder uh, Jerosiav Tavas something other Generican name. And my ruler traits are Warlike and the champions, uh, Champion of the People, which increases happiness. My governing ethics, my overall ethics um, for the faction are Xenophile. So we don't mind races that are slightly different from ourselves, but not, we're not like a, certainly not a Xenophobe and we are... Uh, not re we're going towards the fanatic uh, xenophile where you know everything is just fine no problem at all ten tentacles on your head no problem at all mate uh, we've also got a, a fanatic spiritualist which is weird because I I don't know why I picked it, it just it had ethic diversions minus 30 but Based on your ethics, you also get different technologies. And what I found out after playing uh, a couple of games multiplayer all the way through is that the spiritualists get like uh, psi tech, which is strange. Uh, it's rather uh, coincidental because if you go out, you can see that my symbol is this sort of uh, trident thing. But if you sort of squint, it looks like the Babylon 5 um, psi core symbol, which is essentially what these guys get. They get psi warriors and stuff. So when the when I first researched that when I was playing multiplayer, I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, this is fantastic. Um, Anyway, on this map, uh, my faction, the Generic and Collective, is currently squeezed in between two other factions. We've got the, uh, we'll have to zoom out here, the Belmacosa Blessed uh, Foundation and the Op X League at the, at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to call them pink and red from here on in. Uh, and the guy at the bottom, the red, is a collectivist, a xenophobe, and a materialist. So he's not really too fussed. I mean, in fact, if you look, he's on minus 248, and you can see that uh, a lot of that is because of the border faction and he's he got xenophobia he thinks we're spiritualist fools which we sort of are to be fair and all the other stuff's there what's this uh zobo 3 is an uninhabited and indeed uninhabitable but not unvisited surface so lit with a uh, tall uh, whatever uh, <laughs> i could read all that out but essentially it's my science ship just doing science stuff and we're trying to research things 
But yeah, this guy is uh, quite, he got a lot of minuses there. And he's also a rival. I set a rivalry because what happened was he went to war with us. Uh, this is uh, the Gunther head secured. One of my, well, my science ship, uh, one of its objectives is to essentially go around and gather samples for the, um, for the, I was going to say museum, but it's not right. Can we track on map and go to, there it is, it's in there. Can we even go there? Yes, we can. Uh, it's to go and get the uh, the zoo. It's just trying to fill the zoo up. So we're trying to make a like a big galactic zoo. Uh, technology research and blue shard throw, which is good. I think we'll go for we got warp drive two already. I think we'll go for probably to teeth dryer. Energy storage capacity plus two fifty, and also could cold fusion reactor, which gives us extra extra power so we can build bigger ships. Okay, that's good. But yes, this guy down the bottom, they decided that was a great idea to go to war against me. And they came in and they kicked the absolute hell out of me because they were firing, I believe, um, they were firing a lot of missiles, which was bad and it was kicking the crap out of me. So what I did is I refitted my ships after retreating, equipped them with large space torpedoes, which are like really big honking space torpedoes that you see sort of Battlefleet Gothic style, not just missiles, massive, like, you know, slow moving things and also barrier point defense and then i proceeded to hit back and destroy most of the things in these three worlds and then he went i'm sorry don't do it again anyway let's upgrade my ship you can see they're all going to get upgraded to i'm guessing since most of these are automated let's have a quick look we're probably going to get blue shard throws on the best so uh where is it destroyer is going to get oh no a small shard thrower and small nuclear missiles yeah so it's changing them to that sort of thing okay yeah, that's problematic. We're changing a lot of the uh, defensive systems that I had to have uh, shard throws on. Ships Might be a problem when we go in complete. in a moment, because I think I'm going to declare war on these guys and head in. The one at the top here, the pink, they are not too bad. Minus 27. We don't have a rivalry with them, and I don't really want to have a rivalry with them, because we'll probably end up getting attacked. They are collectivist, materialist, and spiritualist, so we share that spiritualist thing there. Which is good. You can see they are equivalent in terms of their fleet power and naval capacity. Technology level is superior, however. And it's the border faction of minus 72, which is causing us a bit of an issue. We want to create an alliance. That would be nice. So we can't go that way. Guarantee independence. If they attack, we'll automatically come to their defense. Well, the only thing they're going to be attacked of is probably these guys up here. But these are pacifists, so they probably won't attack. We've also got a couple of... Um, Ancient empires. You can see this is a stagnant ascendiary. Is that ascendiary? I can't can't pronounce it. Uh, and they're overwhelming and everything, right? They are just you know you you can't if you attack them now you'll just get absolutely sledged. You can see they've got a big sort of halo around this thing, which you can actually take over and you research and stuff because I've done that in multiplayer just recently. So yeah, either way, don't attack them. There's another one. I think it's these guys. Yeah, them. Yeah, they're overwhelming and everything. The, the holy guardians. Don't go near them. Just don't go near them at all. They will kill you. Actually, going near them might not kill you, but it might hurt. These guys are fanatic militarists and collectivists, so it's not good for me. They're probably going to be attacking me at some point. In terms of the... Yeah, the superior and everything, in terms of their power. So we need to probably, uh, probably hit back at them at some point. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take my ships and try them out in here. In this area, you can see it's got like some uh, crystalline entity. We need to give them a good pounding and uh, just get rid of them just to try the, the, the ships out as well. What I'm going to do as well is go around this area and essentially upgrade any power plant that isn't upgraded because we, well, we need power and we'll move some people over as well if they're not Research already doing complete. that. Let's do some search. Uh, Biolab? Yeah, we'll go for a Biolab and this can be the Bio Planet. I tend to focus the planets on. Um, one way or the other. That can be complete. engineering. This can be engineering world. So, uh, we've got some research completed, which is armored torpedoes. We will instead now go for we've got fusion missiles, plasma thrusters, mining network. We don't have any of that. Engineering facility would be quite nice, but I think it's going to be probably plasma thruster to get more speed because the ships are really, really, really slow at the moment. Over to our science ship, which is down the bottom. I'm just doing a bit of scanning. This is something you don't really want to go near. The Holy Guardian's not too bad. They will have something back here that is worthy of uh, note, but I can't see it because I haven't actually scanned them. But uh, some of these ancient factions, if you get too close, will attack you. Some of them will just give you a little sort of warning, but, you know, it really depends on who you, uh, who you verse. So, here is my fleet. We are going to head in and see what happens. So, I've got... Uh, total military power of 2,300 and a bit of change. They've got 270. So, yeah, good luck to them.
Hmm. But I don't have cruisers yet, which is problematic. Let me just go to spawn point, actually. Oh, yeah, by the way, my uh, home system is called spawn point. I'm going to upgrade all of my shipyards to the higher level. Hostile fleet assuming engaged. I can. I always upgrade the, the shipyards mainly because you get more options here. It also increases your fleet capacity, your naval capacity, and they get, they're just tougher, which means it is uh, good for you for, um, well, it means that if anyone attacks you, they have to then try and get through the the star part, which is always uh, funny to watch. So there's my torpedoes going in, and it's absolutely wrecking them. One of the things I find slightly amusing is these are crystalline entities, essentially, right? You know, they're made of crystal, quartz, whatever. But when they die, they're going to inorganic, they're going like metals and stuff. Okay, yeah, a bit uh, problematic there. I think that'll be probably uh, fixed at some point. Another latest update is uh, changing a couple of things around. They're adding different things to the ships and whatnot. And uh, Leviathans has just been announced as well, which is bringing in, like, essentially the Volons and Shadows, right, from B5. So you get huge galactic wars where ancient empires will then decide that they want to kick the crap out of the other one, and you have to decide whether to join them or to hit them back and make either the Interstellar Alliance. So that's, uh, yeah, it's... um. <laughs> for someone like me who is a very, very, very big B5 fan, it, uh, yeah, you can't really ask for more. But the thing that I was really surprised about, and it sort of really made me think, you know, this is a fantastic piece of kit, is the is the unknown. It does capture that unknown. You don't really know what you're going to get. Like, you can explore, you can find different random events. Sadly, I've now got to the point where I am seeing the same ones over and over again, but there's only so much you can, you can get in, I understand that, but, you know. Either way, uh, you know, you get all that sort of thing in it, and you'll get random pop-ups. Like, for example, one of my one of my planets that I colonised before was totally uninhabited, apparently. I then landed on it, and everything was fine. And then it was essentially hollow Earth, and there was something below the surface that we didn't know. And they were sending nukes up towards us because they thought we had hostile intentions. So could I, I could either pre-nuke them myself, or I could... I'm just going to speed up to max speed so these crack on. Or we could pre-nuke them ourselves, or we could open open diplomatic channels, and we did that, and they went, oh, we didn't know anyone could live on the surface. Our our species cannot live on the surface. We are fairly decent in terms of our technology, but, you know, they're about equivalent to us, but we can't leave the surface, you know, because of reasons. So I was like, oh, fair enough, okay. Um, do you want to work together? Yeah, we'll work together. So we ended up working together. And, uh, you know, here's a gift of loads of jewels, they said, which was really cool. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is really good. <laughs> But uh, then they said, can we have some weapons? Why do you want weapons? Oh, just in case we get attacked. Well, there's only me here. Nobody will attack you. Oh, well, just in case. And I was, this is where I was thinking, do I really do that? I mean, if I, if I actually, you know, let them, <laughs> if I actually do that, I'm going to move this ship over, even though I haven't finished uh, exploring. If I do that, they could attack me with my own weapons. This is not good. <laughs> What am I supposed to do? And in, in the end, I, uh, I think I just ended up, I think I just ended up giving them the weapons and like, oh, cheers, nice one. And then they just left. That was it. So nothing happened. Whew, it could have uh, gone all horribly wrong. Uh, so another bit of research here. Uh, we've got tile blocker, mountain range removal, colonized tropical world. What do I want? Fleet capacity, I think. And I think we will eventually start building. I would like cruisers, but I don't have any. Which is a shame. I don't know whether to stop attacking this guy. Because I know that this guy here is going to probably come at us. In fact, yeah, knowing that, let's build some more destroyers. What we'll do, we'll, we'll design a destroyer. I'm going to put it back to normal speed while we crack on. So we'll go over to our... Actually, I don't even know what this guy's armed with. That's the problem. The thing is, he's a collectivist and a fanatic and militarist. So he, even though... They're superior to me. And even though you can see they're only minus four opinion, that's, they're expanding massively. And eventually, we will meet each other. Which is going to be problematic. Hmm, I might have to start getting some allies. What about you? Offer trade deal. What about research agreement? No, they don't want a research agreement. Information, star charts and stuff. And a sensor link for, say, 30 years. Yeah, that could hopefully help us out. And these guys over here, which are pacifists. Offer trade deal. Star charts, same thing. 
We know that they use wormhole technology because it says wormhole access. We could give them the research agreement, but I don't fancy doing that. How about instead I give them some minerals as a instant transfer? The couple of things that are missing from the game is what you always seem to get missing from... I'm going to give them a thousand minerals, which is all I've got. But if we can get more, you know, if we can get all this trading, we should be okay. They, they say like, they accepted it. They think it's a fair deal. Of course it is. And what about these guys? Can we trade with them as well? They are... Ooh, these guys here are actually at war with an unidentified empire, these guys. Which is up here. So there must be another empire up this side. Interesting. Anyway, we might have a little uh, offer. That's war. We don't want that one. Offer trade deal. Uh, I think how about a research agreement? Both sides, they don't want that at all. Active sense link. No, they don't want that at all. And they just won't give us star charts. They just won't get right, so balls to it, mate. You're at war, I don't really care. Anyway, as I was saying, um, what was I saying? Talking about allies and stuff and the thing over here. Yeah, I'm going to have to scan these systems and then move off. Yeah, these got wormhole technology. There's actually different warp drives, which I, I don't think I was aware of when I was doing my preview. That you actually get different warp drives. Uh, you get three different types of uh, drive. You get the uh, three different types of, like, FDL, as it were. You've got the standard... Uh, lane drive so you can travel along these lanes. That's like what you get a lot in a lot of games like Endless Space and things like that. You get the ones where you can just jump within a border radius. That's the standard one that everybody uses in this game and that's the one I've got. You can see this like a uh, circle around me. Then you've got the wormholes which as far as I'm aware are really good, really fast but uh, they don't particularly... Um, they do work but uh, they're a bit complete. annoying Ships at times. Upgraded. I'm going to move over here with my complete. science ship like so. We still haven't gone over there. We do need to get there research to do that research. Complete. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so we'll go over to uh, more research. Oh, okay. Right, let's just go to... Actually, let's just pause it for a second. So, the technology when you... Uh, this this technology here. Anything in green is essentially you have access to it. It's all randomly drawn based on what you've previously researched. It's like a deck of cards. What you've previously researched, what your ethos is, and things like that. So I've got Alien Visitor Center. The, the green is okay. Uh, the number here is what you need to actually research it. If you've got a number previously, it means you've like uh, probably have a, generally had a bit of a fight and then like check the wreckage then you get a bit of research there and the purple is rare and psionic theory is mind over matter gives you psi warriors so we did we essentially are the psychor from uh, b5 <laughs> which is cool anyway so what i'm doing i'm sending my scout ship over because i think there is someone up here there Evading he is there in fact fleet. there he is over there Evading so we do know fleet. about him uh have we got the technology no we haven't got the technology uh, Pre-industrial civilization has been has finished construction of several uh, printing presses. These machines have enabled them to produce written material in great quantities, resulting in primitive mass communication. Excellent. So we we actually are monitoring a species to see how good or bad it is. I'm going to move over there because I know that's where they are, and then I'll have a little chat and I'll see what they're like. Uh, we've got a bit of rivalry going on. Uh, indirect democracy uh, has uh, declared this uh, this guy has declared them their rival. Mm. Yeah, uh, what was I mentioning before? Uh, it was about talking. Yeah, sorry, it was about um, the diplomacy. There's a couple of things missing in the game, uh, which I'm sure, you know, there's always going to be some holes and things, but uh, the diplomacy is a bit thin in ta places. Like, you can't really uh, have a diplomatic option for, like, asking them to attack someone or anything like that. You can go to war and declare some of that sort of thing, but it's not, like, greatly like that. Fleet. Um, there's also... A synchronized defense would be nice, but um, perhaps not. Can we upgrade our space stations? I don't think we can. I think they're all upgraded, to be honest with you. Yeah, they're all tier 5 by the look of it. Uh, we just need to check how many slots they've got. Yeah, they're all upgraded. Uh, yeah, and there's, there's that sort of thing that is missing, which is a shame. I'm going to upgrade this... I'm going to upgrade some of these to a planetary capital. That's already upgraded, actually. We'll upgrade that to a... Which one was this? Was this going to be a biolab? It will buy a lot of it. Uh, so there is certain things missing from from the game. One of them being espionage as well, which I really do, I don't know why games seem to. A lot of 4X games just seem to miss out on it. They just seem to not bother with it. 
these go, ah, whatever. It's uh, something for future patches, which I'm sure we will see, assuming it, uh, I think still, I think Stellaris has sold well for them, so I would assume they're going to uh, do more really well. Obviously, there's already an announced uh, update, so an announced uh, DLC, but I would assume they're going to do more with it. I really hope for more espionage stuff, so we can see, like, um, spies and uh, subdiffuse and going in to do things like, um, I don't know, like attacking and uh, doing undercover ops and all that sort of thing. That will be cool. Complete. Research complete. We'll pause it for a second. Uh, there's our uh, cruises, so we need to research that as fast as possible. Uh, subspace sensors, which is survey speed plus five, and also we get a uh, subspace sensors unlock, which gives us uh, ship mount subspace sensors. Increase our chance to hit by four. We've also got power plant three, which will be quite good, and uh, Baratheon power plant, which is a type of mineral you get, and then you can build that. But I think overall, probably our basic combat rolls are good as well, which gives you additional weapons damage. I'm going to put that on there as well. Uh, a couple of things that you, I didn't realise as well, n not until late game, is that you get you get different technologies, as I've mentioned, and one of them is red. It's in red, and that's actually, like, really bad yeah, on my health. Oh, there we go. We've um, encountered a alien faction, so I'm going to have a little chat. In. So we need to actually unlock their... Um, unlock their language first. We don't really know uh, what they speak or anything like that. We've got my science ship. It is still over there. We still need to get over to this point. Come on. Research projects, please. It's just loads of red stuff in the way. So as soon as the science ship goes into an area where there's bad things, it will go uh, and leg it because <laughs> it doesn't want to sit around. Oh, hang on. We've encountered some uh, alien vessel and flagged them as the Alfred aliens, apparently. So, declaration of war. <sighs> right then. Foul beast, you had better prepare your fleets. This is war. Our flesh harvesters are coming for your cubs. Now that's not very nice, is it? So the war demands are: I secede the planet of Turbo Prime, which is in Turbo there. The hierarchy of Kalok, uh, humiliate of oh, hang on. Don't say there it was. Well, they also want to secede to other planets, and these guys want to humiliate me. This is bad. This is very bad. I can set my own demands early in the war. I think then. Actually, let's check first. Am I actually at war? With this guy. And if I am, I'm pretty much going to have to white piece this right now. Because I don't think I can go for it. Yep, I am at peace. Sorry, I'm at war with them. Oh, dear. Well, I'll declare rivalry because I might as well. And that gives us overall influence. But I am going to get sledged. Okay, so destroyers. Build the destroyers. All of the destroyers, all of the time. And I've run out of money. This is not going to go well. Let's upgrade my fleets. I currently have not um, built anything. In terms of shipping, I haven't built any ships. They're just on auto-complete and they'll make the best they can. And hopefully that'll do. Anyway. So, where is my science ship? There's a science ship up here. War declaration. Uh, who the hell's this? Hostile fleet detected. Everything's just declaring war. The Balmacosa Blessed Foundation. Where are they? These guys, pink. Declared war on these guys at the bottom. Oh, right. That could help me out. This is what I like about these sort of games. That um, you've got the uh, <laughs> you've got all of this sort of multi-layered stuff going on. It's not just about who you sledge. I'm going to form an aggression pact with that guy, just to increase our um, overall approval, so we can actually form a federation maybe later on. Anyway, where was I? I was upgrading my fleet. It is upgraded. That's a 1.5k fleet, and where is it heading? Construction. It looks like it's heading over to there. So what I need to do is get there quick. 
Now, in all of my systems, I do have space stations, and most of them are quite decent levels. Now, he's got eight destroyers and uh, 18 corvettes. Now, I can make it there in one jump. Whether or not I make it in time to save my station space station attack. is going to be a different matter. So, what are they firing? I need to know what they're firing, really. It could be missiles, but I'm not sure. I also th don't know what drives they use. I think they use the standard lanes. I think I think they use these lanes. By the way, the only reason I can see them is because I research some technology that allows me to see them. So we'll close all this down. Haven't actually set any war demands myself. Set demands. Humiliate. And the problem is that. It increases the essentially the length of the war. So I don't want to set any demands. I don't want to set any demands. I'm just happy with, you know, beating them off, essentially. I want to make them retreat. So I've just jumped in. You can see what's happening is my ships just sit there. That's because it takes a while for your drive. You spool your drive up and then you have to, um, you know, it takes a while for you to get there. These guys are, I've got spiritualists and fanatic individualists, so they're probably not... Overly keen on uh, being friendly with us. Complete. Not going to guarantee independence. You see, a lot of fleets just turned up here, just because I've built all of the ships. I'm on minus 13 energy credits. When your fleet's docked up, it's not too bad, because it doesn't actually uh, use a lot of energy. But when, when you're off, when you're off doing war things, which is the technical term, obviously, you have to, you know, it costs a lot. It costs a lot to... Um, to keep them going. What I'm doing is sending I'm sending all of that fleet over to there to regroup. And actually what's happened is my fleet is going to into their system because they've decided it was best to run. Now that might be a good idea, but the problem I have is that this guy down the bottom, I don't know what jump drive he has, I don't know what weapons he has, I don't know what fleet he has, Postal and I don't know where he's going to attack. What I'm doing instead Postal is jumping in early engaged. and not only kicking the absolute crap out of them here, Postal one would hope. Encountered. Looks like there's another alien vessel encountered, which I will start researching their language. Hang on. There we go. So I just jumped in on top of them. I used to have torpedoes. I re-equipped them, I believe, with some torpedoes and some shard throws. I am losing some ships, but they are losing them at a faster rate. If we have a quick look, I have Anna Beckett, the double skilled um, well, two, two, two star admiral. And she's leading the fleet to victory by the look of it. So they are armed with um, missiles, pretty much exclusively. Oh no, mostly missiles, a bit of kinetic weapons. So I do need to redesign my ships to have interceptors. What he needs to redesign his ships is uh, make them not crap, because, yeah, he's Situation dead. Log updated. So, I could stop. Evading hostile what do I do? Uh... Well, actually, I don't have a choice. I was going to say, I can continue going on and destroy his fleet up here. Or, I could go back and wait to see what he's got for me. There is some more stuff over this side. Got actually a space station there. You see that little jammer FTL inhibitor? What happens is when you jump in, you end up around that. So it sort of sucks you in. We've had a little chat with this uh, Sinor Dominion. So, they are fanatic xenophobe. Xenophobes and militarists. Alien creatures, I speak on behalf of Grand Marshal Lefris or Devren, the <laughs> undisputed ruler of the Dominion. Respect our borders and keep out of, of the affairs. Perhaps our mighty fleets will refrain from visiting your wretched world. Love is friendship set to music. We can say that because <laughs> of our nation. Updated. Right, let's just create another fleet here. Put all these together. There we are. We're still going around to build more destroyers. So it looks like we've managed to destroy their um, their space station here. Now we can start bombarding their worlds. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to start doing that. Now I don't have anywhere to invade because I've got no complete. I've got no troops. But we can resolve that by going to armies and say assault army. Build three there. Hostile fleet engaged. And build three there. The problem I have is that this guy isn't really too much of a problem. It's this guy. What is he going to do? There it is. There it is. I don't know if you saw that. That was a 3k fleet that's just come in. 
that's going to do me in that fleet. And he's using the fast jump drives as well. Come on, move, move. Ah, damn it. I can't leave. I'm in combat. Doesn't look like I am, but I am in combat with essentially this crappy little Hostile destroyer there. Engaged. And now we're going to fire long range weaponry. I want to leg it, and I want to leg it quick because I need to. Look at that. This guy's coming straight for Neutrodol. Oh, yeah, my main system's called Neutrodol, which is a deodorizer here in the UK. I don't know if it's available anywhere else, but it's a deodorizer. And uh, the only reason I called it that is because. I needed to call my main system something, and I looked around, and I thought, that'll do. Ah, <laughs> oh, crap. So they jumped in here with a, with a massive fleet, essentially. And they are absolutely sledging me. We are learning, however, that they've got a lot of missiles and energy weapons, mainly energy weapons, which is bad for me. It's all bad. Everything's bad. I can retreat, and I'm going to retreat, even though I might lose some ships. I probably will lose some ships. I've lost a little bit of shippage. But I need to go back first to see... Uh, I need to go back, really, to... He's coming for my fleet, isn't he? It's exact, that's all he's going for. He's coming directly for my fleet. And he's going to get it and all. I'm going to have to leg it. What I'm going to have to do is leg it over to Neutrodol. This is where a bit of thinking is going to be in order, which is problematic because I don't do that very well. Right. He's coming for my fleet, as far as I can tell. So what I'm going to do is leg it back to Neutral because in order for him to follow me, he has to go through one, two jumps, because he can't jump directly. He has, to, he has to follow the jump lines. So I'm bringing over here so I can repair all of my ships. There we go. So station under attack over here. This is the front lines, and he's going to sledge my station. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, we've got some different research. We've got uh, blue lasers, disruptors. Uh, disruptors are probably going to be best because it uh, inflicts shield damage. And actually, if we look here, I don't know what he's armed with. He's got armor, he's got some shields, and he's got... Yeah. Mm, what's a blue laser? It's armor penetration. I don't really know exactly what he's really good with. Advanced combat rolls is just a generically good upgrade. Generically good? It is. It's, it's good. Right, spawn point is now upgrading my... F it's actually sorting my fleet out. What I'm going to do is Situation pause it. I want to go over to my destroyer. And I want to change some of the weapons. So, Oh, actually, it doesn't matter. It, it's fixed it itself, look. You can see it's actually put on barrier point defense and uh, small armored torpedoes. So it's done that itself. That's fine, then. So we'll let it crack on. I don't think I'm going to win this war. I genuinely think this is going to be me gone. Now, if I if I just white peace them, if I just say, look, white peace, give them all of their demands, they will get three planets. Which is essentially me out of the game. Hmm. I don't want that, as one might expect. Let me upgrade all my fleets. We're actually getting bombarded here. Uh, yep. Military power. They've got... Where have they got fleets? They've got one here, which is 1.7k. Oh, we can stop that. And 3.6. I can't stop the 3.6, I don't believe, unless I'm just generally better in terms of my uh, technology, which I don't think I am. Station under but attack. I might be able to take the... Where are they going? Problem is, I don't know where these guys are going. I think they're just going over there. I might be able to beat them, assuming Station I can, attack. um... Station under attack. Assuming my technology is better, or I'm better equipped. They've just immediately destroyed my station. If I can take these guys out, I'm minus 16 Hostile for my overall war game. score. And this will swing back and forward based on the attack and defense. And essentially because I've been losing the war, the chances of me being able to offer or set my own demands and, and or they're just giving up on the war are slim to none. <laughs> Which is not good. I'm now engaging them with a lot of torpedoes. Obviously, their torpedoes are going out and hitting all of my little mining things. So even if I d destroy this, I'm going to lose a fair bit of resources here. Could have been a lot worse, though. There's my torpedoes absolutely slamming into them and destroying them. They've got torpedoes coming towards me, which hopefully my interceptors will take out. So, yes, look, interception. I'm now intercepting them because I've got interceptors three. So they're actually not getting so far any missiles in. Excellent. This is good. Right. Continue building destroyers. At a 
probably just at my main spawn point location. Which is my home world. It's called Spawn Point, because why not? They are. Oh, look at that. My ship just split in half. I am losing ships, but I'm losing them at a much slower rate than them, compared to them. Hmm. This is good. It's not good, because even if I win this, I'm still suffered quite a bit of losses. Actually, I've only lost a couple of destroyers. Um, but depending on how it ends, yeah, I'm absolutely giving them a massive pasting here. It's what you deserve, you scumbags. Yeah, this should hopefully alter the war score, because they've just lost a fairly big fleet. Situation log updated. Damn it, it didn't really take the edge off it at all. Right, I'm going to have to bring it back home. Yeah, so what's happened here is you can see I'm now getting... These people are above my planet, and they are attacking it. And these are... Uh, it says nine ships and the only military power 13. It's because they transport. That's all they are. They just transport. I can't win this unless I take their fleet out. And that's what I need to do. Which is going to be quite difficult, I feel. Max speed it. Essentially what I want to do Station under attack. is get as many destroyers as I can. Detected. I want to repair my fleet and I want to upgrade my fleet. If I can get to say 2.5k, I might be alright. Chances of it happening. Station under attack. Slim. They're attacking there again. With a th with their 3.6k fleet. Mine's upgraded. You know what? I'm going to have to go in now. Attack. I'm going to have to go in now and see what happens. Because otherwise, they're going to take this over. They've already taken this world as far as I'm aware. No, they haven't for some reason, and they've left it so I can rebuild my spaceport. Haha, <laughs> you fools. Right. So, can I take this fleet out? They've got some lasers, though. Can you see? They've got blue and purple lasers, and they're legging it. They're absolutely legging it. Right, so, this is going to be the fight that determines whether or not I can uh, win this. They've got, looks like, small... They are just missiles. No, they're fighters. Look, because they're actually taking out my missiles. Damn it! That's the last thing I wanted, but to be fair, I have got a fairly good bombardment coming in. Build, destroyers, more of, please. Station and under attack. if there's an area where it doesn't have a spaceport, it's getting a spaceport. I think it's always best to upgrade it. So they're managing, but they're managing to get in here with their um, some of their missiles. Oh no, most of their missiles are getting taken out, and also all their. <laughs> All of their um, fighters have been taken out because I've got really good point defense. My shields is at the top here, and it is all, it's going down in general. That blue bit there is my shields, I believe. And they're hitting quite hard now. It's because of them lasers. I've got very little defense against it. And look, look most, of my, most of my ships are damaged. Although, they're also quite damaged. But I'm losing ships at a massively increased rate. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, look. You see, they've got loads of shields, but their hull's going down because torpedoes ignore shields, and they go straight through. I'm giving them a fairly decent pasting. Like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be doing this well. I'm going to lose the fight. He says unsure. This could go my way if I'm lucky. Because they've only got four cruisers left. And... Situation log yes! Printed. They've legged it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're coming back in. Yes, they are coming back in. Well, I'm following them. They, legged, they jumped out, and now they've um, come back in for another crack at the whip. Where are they? They're running away. They're actually running away. Look, they're running back. So, in summary, they've attacked me. I've managed to fend off this guy and fend off a much bigger fleet. We do have problems here because this is where they attacked me. And you can see there's a lot of unemployed. That's because uh, a lot of these places are damaged and I do need to repair them. So I will move people over into different areas. It's essentially like all the micromanaging stuff that I have to sort out. Overall, the war is going terribly, wo uh, terribly bad. But... Um, we sort of knew that this was going to be the case, right? So. You repair. This. 
combine. There we go. We're back up to 1,000 in terms of our fleet. Do I think it's going to be enough? Well, it's going to be enough to hold them off for now. Whether or not that changes later on is a different story. But it's the it's the uh, it's the it's the missiles that won it for me. Not just because they are the weapons I've got. Oh, sorry, well they are they are obviously. But I'm not saying that you know it's because I had loads of missiles. It's because I specifically had missiles, uh, the, the torpedoes, in fact, um, these things. Um, look, cannot be evaded. Hundred percent shield protection uh, penetration. They had loads of shields. I didn't care. You saw they had full shields, but my weapons just went straight through. So I actually looked out because I didn't know what they had. So it worked out. Either way, I think the war is not going to war in my... It's not going my way. But if I can just hold them off, I think I'll be alright. But I'm going to leave it there because this video is getting long. And it is going to be a, just one more turn thing where I'll be here for another three hours. And um, I'll just be playing all day. So <laughs> there you go. That's a little bit of Stellaris, Stellaris or Stellaratuaris. As me and a couple of friends have been calling it because nobody knows how to pronounce the bloody thing. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.